Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So today our group will present on the topic of the constitutional status and origin of the Malay Regiment and its structure and position currently. So my name is Sarah Tufatiha binti Abdul Hamid. Uh, my metric number is 216260 and my address members is Nur Nabiha binti Yahya, Siti Nur Asya binti Jamil and Wan Munaratul Akmal binti Wan Ahmad Ridwan. So we continue with the introduction. So basically, what is the Malay Regiment? Before I will continue with the meaning of the Malay Regiment, I will brief uh, a little bit uh, about the Malay Regiment. Uh, Malay Regiment is founded in 1933 with the 25 recruits only, and it took place in Fort Dixon under the command by the British officer. However, nowadays, uh, it, the Malay Regiment is called by Malaysian Armed Forces, which is there are infantry known as the Royal Malay Regiment. So we continue with the meaning. So what is the meaning of the Malay? Malay literally interpreted as the, the language spoken in Malaysia. However, in this context, it's considered as Malay people. While the regiment means a group of soldiers uh, commanded by a soldier officer in charge. So if we, if we combine together, Malay regiment means a group of soldiers uh, of Malay people commanded by a soldier officer in charge. So we continue with the status Malay regiment before and after. So we, before, uh, it's in 1933, before, uh, which is the before the Independence Day. So the first law in military in Tanah Melayu or Malaysia is the Malay Regiment Enactment 1933, where at the time it's passed by the Federal Council. There is no help or there is no one who has expert in military, military law from the member of the Department of the Judge Advocate General, as there was no available at that time. And others law uh, that uh, that uh, introduced uh, throughout the year is the Federation Regiment Ordinance 1952, Military Forces Ordinance 1952, Navy Ordinance 1958, and others. So, continue with the after uh, Merdeka Day, 19, uh, specifically in 1972, uh, the legislation um, uh, introduced the Armed Forces Act 1972 that uh, used until now. So, this law is actually comprised all the law before which before the independent days, which is the enactment and the ordinance. And most of the, of the part in uh, AFA 1972 is basically based on the British Army Act 1955. And the, uh, this law is, uh, is separated with the other subsisting law of the Peter Chong Yen 1977 uh, that the, high, the Court of Appeal uh, dismissed the appeal from the appellant that uh, to not judge uh, the appellant uh, under the Malay Regiment enactment. And, uh, how I, and the court also stated that the court actually has no power or jurisdiction to intervene uh, with the military law that, apply, that apply, uh on the army, except if the civil law, a civil right of the army is interrupted. Uh, the reason why it's separated is because the first is ter territorial justice where the law is still applicable to the army even they are outside from the federal territory. Second is because the in war situation, the law that can be used is only the military law including the courts material in order to protect and keep safety for the public, which that means they rule the country. And third uh, is to maintain the, uh, the discipline among the army, prevent them to uh, from disobey the command of the army officer as provided in AFA 1972. So other than, other than AFA, uh, there are also uh, law that related to military is uh, federal constitution. So in the view of the federal constitution, uh, the army is considered as public servant by virtue of Article 132, Clause 1 for the stated that for the purpose of the, this constitution, the public services are Clause uh, Paragraph A, the armed forces. Uh, so before the Independence Day, uh, the army uh, actually not uh, there is no law stated that the army is public servant, but uh, the law and the, the role and the function of the army is the same with the federal constitution nowadays. So next, uh, the YDPA has actually has the power stated in Article One Three Seven Clause One and Article Forty One, where the YDPA is the supreme commander to control, command, and discipline in appropriate to armed forces. However. Uh, even though uh, the armed forces is considered as the public servant, the Article 135 uh, that protect the public servant actually does not apply in armed forces as their law is totally different and independent. So I will pass to my member to continue with the history of the Malay Regiment. Bismillah, my name is Siti Nasheem Zaman, Metric Member 211 and I will proceed with the origin of the Malay Regiment. So like in the first place, 
the Malay regiment was issued by Malay monarchs, which, which includes uh, the sultans and also their subject, which comprised of uh, Sultan Pera, Royal Pera family, Sultan Pahang, and Minimum in 1920, while the 1933 uh, marks the birth of the Malay regiment, where the Malay regiment was formed, was formed at Poriksim. So like previously, uh, from 1933 until 2007, the Malay Regiment is called as Malay Regiment. But uh, after uh, 2008 onwards, the Malay Regiment was uh, later being called as Royal Regiment. So literally, there are three types of arm, army. That is for the air. Uh, they call it as Royal Malaysian Air Force, while for the sea, uh, they call it as uh, Royal Malaysian Navy, and for the land, we uh, they also they call it as Malaysian Army. So uh, along the Malay Regiment, along the history, uh, historical event of Malay Regiment, there are two battles involved in uh, this particular uh, history. Like in, but these two battles were was happened in like in very near. Uh, in very near date, which uh, like in the battle of Pasir Panjang, which it happened in uh, 13, uh, in 13th February 1942, while battle of battle of Bukit Chandu, it happened like a day after the battle of Pasir Panjang Ridge. This is because like uh due to like the first attack from the Japan, uh was like literally not not satisfied and not wind. They not won in the battle, so like they approach a second attack, which called it as Battle of Bukit Chandu. Um, these two, uh, Pasir Panjang Ridge and also Bukit Chandu was located in the west coast of Singapore, which uh, are in the near place. So they like uh attack twice uh in the west coast of Singapore, like to get the peace. Uh, from the Malay regiment um to to fulfill or to complete the the formation of the Malay regiment, Bruce or like uh, of, uh, one of the commanding officer of the experimental company company met the recruits and told them uh, frankly what to expect in their new way of life as they are literally now um go, get uh, get into the military life or military so they will they need to obey or put their real put their loyalty into the state so like uh in these types of and uh, in this period like it focus on the preparation or like the inspection investigation prior to the uh, like training uh, prior the battle or like any battle or any war has been made. It is like more to the preparation. That's called as experimental company. So next we will proceed with the second period, 1935 and 1941, where in this case, uh, like prior to the battle, uh, as the battle of Bukit Chandu and the battle of Pasir Panjang happened in 19. 42, like uh, this types on uh, this period not uh, not include any battle yet. Uh, this period like uh, when the training is involved, uh, when the training is made, they measure uh, some of the problems of the regiment that are not really solved. Once the Bruce Lee, I'm sorry, once the Bruce, the Bruce is not, is like one of the British officer left Malaya, uh, like one of the commander office, commanding office uh, of the experimental company. When was the Bruce left Malaya in August 1933, which like maybe the lack of uh, training or like trust instead of the Bruce Lee, which made the problems of the regiment is not solved. So like there are two uh, problems. The first one is uh, battalion strength of the regiment itself, like the strength has been has been weakened. And the second is the shortage of officers and platoon commander in 1935. So never, uh, nevertheless, although 
there are two major problems of cure in like right after the Bruce left the Malaya. The good relations between the regiment and also the Federated Malay Force were maintained from the outside, which generally helps them in the administrative matter. So like uh, literally in the second period, which is like the true formation of Malay regiment after the period of preparation and inspection and also the training from the Malay regiment. Uh, although there are the, the, these two problems occurred, however, they managed to solve these two problems afterwards. Like uh, after the uh, the battle of Pasir Panjang Ridge and also battle, um, battle of Pas um, Bukit Sandu has been a uh, half has happened. Uh, they like improve uh, their regiment and the Malay regiment time by time. Until today, like our current Malay uh, Royal Royal uh, our current Royal Royal Malay regiment was uh, like being trained by the British by the United States uh, Army also. And also, they have a diplomatic. They have a strong relationship with the other countries, which make uh, the protection uh, in Malaysia is like getting, getting uh, get protected. Mm, protection is become strong, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So the next, I uh, will proceed with the next presenter. Thank you. Now, let's move on to the organizational structure and position of the Malay Regiment. Starting with the recruitment and membership qualification, the Malay Regiment is one of two infantry regiments and their premier unit in the Malaysian Army. It is an all-military force established in Port Dickson on 1 March 1933 under the British Officers' Command. And their experimental company was established with 25 Malay recruits under a British officer selected of over a thousand applicants. And men of the Malay Regiment recruited from local native volunteers and the British agreed to limit recruitment to Malays excluding Malaya's ethnic Chinese community. Therefore, it can be said that the old Malay regiment only recruited Malay people only, excluding other races as opposed to the current Malay regiment. Next, the roles and position of Malay regiment is divided into three aspects that is primary, secondary and supporting roles. Firstly, the main role of the Malay military regiment is to protect all national frontiers and borders from invasion during this time, to repel all enemy forces during war and national emergency, and to deal with any form of rebellion aided by internal or external forces. The second role is to assist the police and civil authorities in maintaining public orders and anti-terrorism and also to assist public authorities in national disaster and relief work or national development. Thirdly, its supporting role is to conduct peacekeeping operations under the United Nations. So here is the organizational structure of Ministry of Defense. Currently, the Malaysian Armed Force is structured around five components, including Malaysian Armed Force Headquarter, Army Headquarter, Royal Malaysian Navy Headquarter, Royal Malaysian Air Force Headquarter, and the civilian components of the Ministry. The Chief of Defense Force is the head of the three service in the Malaysian Armed Force, and the Secretary General is the head of the civilian armed organization of the ministry which is appointed to provide administrative leadership to the ministry. There are two elements in Ministry of Defense. The first one is the Medical Directorate. It is to maintain the health of personnel and preserve the human fighting strength of the Malaysian Armed Force and to provide health care service for the family and personnel. The Corps carries out its role by undertaking activities such as health education, institute measures to prevent disease, evacuation, treatment and rehabilitation of the sick and injured military personnel in peace and war, plan conduct and supervise the training of the servicemen, hygiene, sanitation and first aid and also conduct the medical examination of personnel as required. And the second one is Pusat Science Dan 
technology pertahanan. Its basic core is to selectively apply science and technology for the force development and enhancement of the Malaysian Armed Force. And its function cover technical support service, consultancy, advising service, standardization, research, development and transfer of technology. The Malaysian Army is establishing the Army Training Command to restructure and improve its training system. The logistic support is being streamlined and improved under the current Army Logistic Command, consistent with the requirement of a credible conventional force. The Army Headquarters is located at the Ministry of Defence, the apex of the Malaysian Armed Force Organisational Superstructure. It has a unique combination of being a policy-making organisation as well as a common headquarter which is made up of the following subsystem, which is the command element, staff division, reserve force, inspectorate division and the directorate. The common function is vast upon the Chief of Army, is assisted by the Deputy Chief of Army. And the staff division is headed by the chief of staff who is responsible for the function of the army headquarters which deals with development and plans, operation and training, intelligence, manpower and logistics. The reserve division is responsible for all aspects of the reserve force comprising volunteers and reservists. The inspectorate division is responsible for carrying out checks on the operational readiness of all army units. There are 12 elements of Malaysian Army. First, Logistic Command. Its role is to manage inventory of ammunition and explosive of the Malaysian Army. Second, human resource organization activities are such as recruitment and selection, training and development, compensation, labor relation and occupational safety and security. The third, infantry role is to seek out and locate the enemy, to kill or capture him, to seize and hold ground and to repeal attack by day or night. And fourth, signal provides communication and their tasks are more under technical equipment, repairing and maintenance. Fifth, combat engineers assist in the maintenance of troop mobility and while denying the freedom of movement to the enemy and provide essential service while assisting in military civic actions. The sixth one, artillery. Artillery creates fire supremacy in the battle area so that the enemy cannot interfere with the operation of the Malaysian army. Seventh, the special service are known as commandos are elite infantry force trained for covert operations that operate in small numbers and deep inside enemy territory. Eight, the intelligence corps provides personnel who report information on the enemy and operational areas, convert information into intelligence and disseminate intelligence to higher, lower and adjacent units. Ninth, the military police court had to maintain the discipline of military personnel in assisting the armed force in war training to enforce military law, policies, regulations and procedures on all members of the armed force and to investigate any case involving them. Tens, the Supplies and Transport Corp function as management in providing transport, provision operations, petrol, oil and lubrication, providing air delivery and providing logistic movement of the armed force. Elements for the ordinance, their extensive duties range from managing clothing to explosive disposal leading to pressure, chemical, twilight and injury hazards. Finally, the electrical and mechanical engineers provide engineering support for the creative and preventive maintenance of the army's vehicle, machines, heavy plants, weapon system and equipment or electrical and electronic systems. As for the commentary and the opinions in regards to the Malay Regiment, we'll be focusing on two main issues, which is the first issue is that the Malay Regiment is considered as a public servant under Article 135 of the Federal Constitution. And the second issue is that we knowing the extent of jurisdiction of the court and the armed forces personnel's right of hearing. Um, before we begin, uh, based on the findings, we opine that the Malay Regiment is officially recognized under the Federal Constitution as part of the um, public servants um, because the essence of Article 135 is that the members of the public service can only be dismissed by the right authority um, and be given reasonable opportunity to be heard. However, there were amendments made where the authorities had been given restrictions in hiring public uh, servants were given 
uh, even li li liability in exercising their right to dismiss public servants who hold office at pleasure. And Article 135, Clause 1 um, illustrates where armed forces may be dismissed or reduced in rank by an authority and they are not entitled to a hearing which does not uh, showcase natural justice in giving them an opportunity to be heard before being sentenced. So in regards to that, by focusing on the main issue that um, the Malay regimen is considered as a public servant under Article 135 of the Federal Constitution, uh, in the case of Murni bin Haji Muhammad Taha against public prosecutor, that the defendant was an accounting officer and he had been serving in the Royal Brunei Malay Regiment and he was also been posted to the 2nd Battalion. And in this case, the court ruled that the defendant is a public servant, thus subjected to government orders, which are done by the pleasure of the YDPA. As for the second um, case, uh, authority would be in the case of Abdul Salam bin Hussein against Majlis Angkatan Tentera Malaysia, where um, in this case it was in regards to the restriction of this missile against the plaintiff who was a lieutenant in the Royal Malaysia Air Force and he um, was made by the YDPA. Uh, the dismissal, of course, is a valid law under Article 135. This is because um, the, the High Court ruled that Article 132, Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution and Article 135, Clause, um, clause 1 of the Federal Constitution, it is um, in regards to the members of the armed forces from the class of public servants are not entitled to hearing. However, in regards to the jurisdiction of the court, there are instances where such jurisdiction is limited. Um, this can be stated and illustrated in the case of Abdul Salam, again, in which the High Court uh, also ruled that they had no jurisdiction to make further inquiries as the plaintiff was governed under the Armed Forces Act 1972. This is because the provision only prescribes the methods in using the power and not in regards to the exclusion of the jurisdiction. In spite of that, uh, we opine that it is debatable as to, as to the position of armed forces, personnel, that the other branches would actually would like to consider legislative intervention as to include armed forces to be rightfully heard in court and uphold natural justice. Uh, another, another case would be in the case of Rita Fnell, where the plaintiff was a military officer and he was subscribed to the regulations of service. Um, and in regards to the, to the jurisdiction, the court had, had, none, had no jurisdiction and had limited them to question on the reduction of rank as he was being restricted. And the reduction of rank, this is somehow in line with, our, uh, with, the, uh, with Article 135 of the Federal Constitution. As a conclusion, um, the Malay Regiment is part of the public service, uh, which is in reliance to Article 135 of the Federal Constitution, um, which subscribes to the doctrine of pleasure of the YDPA, and the restrictions imposed, uh, such uh, um, and the restriction imposed onto the armed forces or the Malay Regiment is that they are not entitled to the security of tenure, um, and the jurisdiction of the court in dealing with armed forces, there are limited uh, limitations. Um, and if the acts uh, committed by the armed forces are within their official capacity and not in regards to personal aspects, thus the High Court will not intervene. That's, that is all from us. Thank you.